we're the Flick Chicks. I'm Anne. And I'm Monica. And this is the episode where our hearts are colored red and blue, which which makes purple. Do you get it? Okay. I thought that's why they needed to film that because, you know, (laughs) Republican and liberal put together makes purple. But I didn't even think about that. Right? (laughs) That is not (laughs) why they did that. I was like, oh, okay. But I like your thought process. It's pretty creative. I was like, well, that must be the theme, Nespa. But obviously, I'm not a military babes. I don't know anything about. Yeah. The only reason I knew is because when I was trying to Google the movie to Mm -hmm. like get to the Wikipedia page, it was only showing me like purple hearts as in like the military designation it's actually so very I was hard like, oh to find the yeah. film like i was looking it up for like yeah, purposes. Like, why, yeah like what are you hiding yeah, <laughs> like, like, you know? sis, like i had to look up the actress click on her discography to finally not discography <laughs> yeah, filmography. filmography. <laughs> <laughs> no it's true so i was yeah. like that's the only reason i was like oh so that's why it's called purple hearts i thought yeah yeah but no i like your reasoning it's pretty uh yeah i, that's, I that's pretty smart actually. i swear that's what they're thinking too they probably went like oh maybe my it's gosh. a double entendre yeah that's what they're thinking they're like oh my gosh this works yeah anyways guys if you didn't catch our drift we're gonna be talking about purple hearts the film that came out on netflix uh like a That's few weeks ago, sweeping actually, the right? nation sweep- for some reason. Yeah, number one movie in Canada, at least. Yeah, for I think it came out like two weeks right? ago or yeah. something. Not not that long ago, but mm-hmm. yeah, for some reason, uh, everyone's talking about it. Everybody um, and their mamas. Okay. It, yeah. Yeah. It seems like there's a different consensus based on what social media platform. Oh, you're reading. interesting. <laughs> See, I don't know as much um, about that, so I'm so interested to hear because I know you're the queen of um, seeing all the takes, which is funny. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's my job yeah. on this on this podcast. researcher okay um yeah. yes i'm the metrics analysis or yeah. an analyzer exactly <laughs> really we know what we're talking about all right so yeah. we're gonna be talking this is like another roasting movies by the fire but it's gonna be a little less structured yes. my friends we're still gonna be doing yes. the summary to jog your memory about the film yeah. but we're gonna open it more as a discussion rather than things we liked and things we didn't because there's a lot to unwrap right. in this film <laughs> yeah because spoiler alert i don't even think there's gonna be that many things that i liked about the movie yeah I about you but i think you're gonna be su- not surprised <laughs> you're gonna oh, be no. like wait what? <laughs> oh no but it's gonna, okay. it's gonna be fun i don't i don't think you should okay. be okay <laughs> all right purple hearts let's let's just yeah get a into summary it. so um w- oh wait i'm just gonna say I'm not even going to give a spoiler warning for this, at least personally. I don't know about you, but for my end, yeah, I think you're better off just listening to this podcast episode than going to watch the movie. Um, yeah, I don't think just it's like it's like a very like hallmarky type like film. Like you cannot be even if I heard the whole resume like sis, not a surprise. Like true. everything's very uh, predictable. But also like I'm not going to be like, oh, my God. If you haven't watched it, pause this right now. And go watch <laughs> yeah, it no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not. You don't need to that. do that. Um, don't just. But I don't think anybody fine. would click this having not already seen this because I don't think I would click on anything called Purple Hearts if I didn't know. You know what though? Maybe maybe they didn't see it because I did have some people oh, yeah. telling me personally. They're like, "Oh, I haven't watched it, but I heard about mm. it, so I'll just listen to your podcast episode." Interesting. Instead, so. Okay. You know. Well, we're getting into the for those people right now. You're we are at the right yes. place. <laughs> All right, ready. Cassie Salazar is the um, main protagonist. Uh, she's a waitress at a bar, but also performs with her band called The Loyal at the same bar whenever her boss like gives her a slot. So basically, it's ensued that her band's not like, you know, headlining anybody or anything. Um, and six months ago, she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and she struggles to afford her insulin. And she needs it like bad. Like I know there's different levels of type 1 diabetes. So hers is the type where she's like, almost passing out every five seconds um <laughs> one night yeah diabetic coma is the, yeah literally the, like the way they play it. correct medical mm-hmm. term but yeah <laughs> um and one night she's serving a group of marines who are like soon to be deployed and they stopped at the bar and one of them is luke and he tries to like flirt with her and hit on her but she turns him down for like basically being a misogynist <laughs> or being misogynist adjacent yeah, yeah. um yeah and yeah so they, they spewing recover public and yeah bubble. yeah <laughs> so then he basically they they start off on the wrong foot and um in desperate need cassie proposes to frankie who's like her childhood friend and also luke's like a roommate uh, or a bunkmate whatever 
And she proposes to Frankie because she needs, she wants to benefit from the health insurance that military spouses get. Like, basically, they're, like, set for life, basically, if you do it. Um, And Frankie turns her down because he explains that he plans to marry his high school sweetheart, Riley. And Luke overhears the whole conversation and is, like, really against it. He's like, you can't do a, a fraudulent marriage because... That's, like, really bad. Like, you you could get in big trouble in the military and stuff like that. Um, but Luke himself is not doing so hot. He's, like, a recovered addict. And he still owes $15,000 to his dealer, Jono. <laughs> the name? <laughs> just was such a dumb name. Jono. Jono. And Jono. So just John with an O. <laughs> yeah. And, like, John is, like, you know, an accountant. and But Jono is, is packing, you know, a gun. So <laughs> Jono, like, regularly threatens to mess with Luke's family if he doesn't pay up. So Luke is, like, oh scrambling so he realizes that him his situation and cassie's problems can be solved by them getting married because also uh, military guys who get married get like a lot of spousal support slash allowance like there's a lot of benefits basically um so they agree to get married before luke luke gets deployed and they agree to like divorce after a year um so they do get married pretty quickly and after they get married, they go to the bar with Frankie and Luke's like other Marine friends. And one of his friends makes a, not a, even a joke, a, a toast about hunting down Arabs. <laughs> is the way he pronounced it. Arabs. And Cassie pops off, uh, rightfully so. And, but Luke is like, you know, sit down, whatever. And they have a whole fight. Um, but they have to pretend to make up because because people are watching. And then they go to their hotel room that night and Cassie's ready to pop off again. But then Luke is like, I'm scared. And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> and, then, and then they make out and have the sex. OK, um, <laughs> at least it's it's implied. I, didn't, I guess. It, yeah, they had sex. And then. No, they definitely showed it. Yeah. Not showed it, but like. It yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty clear. Yeah. yeah. And then literally the next morning, um, the me- Marines are deployed and Luke's like acting weird about how they had sex. And Cassie's like, OK, whatever. No big deal. Um, and then while Luke is deployed or away, they start sending emails and video calls to each other so, to keep up with the ruse because, you know, basically they're like under surveillance the whole time, which is crazy. And they're starting to, like, catch feelings while they're exchanging emails and stuff. And she ends up writing a song called Come Back Home. And she, like, performs it for the Marines, which inspires her to, like... I guess she didn't really write songs, like, before. Like, she was performing covers before with her band. So yeah. I think the idea She said, is, like, she tried, yeah. but nothing really would, like, come out. Exactly. Like so then she ends up writing that song, and it goes viral. So now her band is, like, giving giving what it's supposed to have gave and she is in the middle of her performance actually like she gets a call to perform somewhere to perform that song and it goes well but after the performance she gets a call from the like i don't know the officers like the army officers telling her that luke was injured on the field i guess you call it and um (laughs) she tries to call his brother but she didn't know his brother's like actual name. So she just looked it up and accidentally ends up calling his dad, which is bad for them because um, Luke's dad is like a retired MP slash like military officer, police guy. So he's like the type to turn them in, um, which is not giving for them who wanted to like basically they were they only agreed to get married, but they're not living together. And they're not actually like acting like a married couple. But now because his dad knows and his whole family knows they really have to keep up the ruse. And also, while this is happening, uh, Cassie finds out that Frankie died in, like, the... I guess they set off, like, a landmine. I don't know exactly, but... Yeah, in the same accident that injured Luke, yeah. Frankie died. Uh, Frankie died. And at his funeral, Cassie gives back the ring that he let her borrow for the fake marriage um, that he was actually going to give to Riley at the end, which is which is kind of sad. Um, <laughs> and then Luke now is wheelchair bound because of his injuries and they do think he's going to be able to walk again with like uh pt i mean uh personal training or physical therapy Sorry. physical therapy <laughs> my gosh <laughs> personal training <laughs> ah but you get jacked. i know eh? 
Um, so then, but he also, like I said, he now has to move in with Cassie because they have to keep up the whole ruse because the dad's like, oh, I'm going to come and pick him up every week or whatever to go to physical therapy. So they really had to act married for real, for real. And things are bad at first. Like they fight a lot and then they just like slowly start. I mean, also Luke is obviously not doing well because he's wheelchair bound. So he's like not taking that well, but they start uh, catching more feelings and Cassie ends up even adopting a golden retriever for Luke as an emotional support animal for his recovery. And then don't worry, we're getting to the third act twist or whatever. Um, (laughs) So Jono is still looking for his money and he breaks into Cassie's mother's house to like send a message to Luke. And, um, that night Cassie's sugar levels drop like a lot sending her into shock and like Luke helps her recover and all that stuff and they like share a kiss and they're like oh she's like which is like a big thing apparently because like she doesn't really let people help her that's like some type of thing but while she's sleeping um Luke that morning goes to Jono and beats him up and like throws the (laughs) the 15 grand at him and tells him to stay away which is like why didn't we pay him before? But okay. Um, yeah. And then instead, Jono, the little snitch, calls Cassie's mother and like tells him about Luke's past and like also like why they did the whole like the fraudulent marriage because obviously Cassie's mom doesn't know all that. Um, and then Cassie confronts Luke about this because she's like pissed that he didn't he didn't like he didn't tell her why he was in the whole thing. So he didn't tell her that he owed 15 grand to a drug dealer and all that jazz so she's like he was more like she's like okay why do you need the money and he's like it's none of your business yeah none of your business that was like the whole thing and yeah so he kept it a secret so she's like mad and she's mostly mad because like um the guy broke into her mom's house and like he didn't even say like what was happening even though he knew it was Jono and stuff like that um so then <clears throat> she's like she asked for a divorce um and she says she wants him out of the house by the time she comes back um and she i guess she goes to a concert and uh luke returns home from a run which is his first run ever since the accident and he's detained by military police who were informed by their like fraudulent marriage like jono snitched on him basically to like he whistleblowing to everybody um and luke's father calls cassie to like tell her what happened so she like meets luke in court and then he sees her there and then he luke pleads completely guilty like and he like takes the whole blame and he uh says that like cassie wasn't aware that um this was violating military law so he takes the fall and he's sentenced to six months in the brig i guess it's just prison for it's, military it's, people it's military prison yeah military prison. and he'll also receive a bad conduct conduct eh, conduct discharge which actually is pretty int- that means like you don't get any of the benefits that you do as an ex-military like none of it um yeah it's kind of like a dishonorable dis- yes exactly deal, very so. yeah exactly so um and then cassie is like "Ooh, thanks for helping me but she's still like mm-hmm. and she <laughs> goes to um like perform with her band who have been like uh who have signed a contract to open for florence and the machine but then after her show, like she sings her song and she's like, oh, my gosh, like all my songs are about him. So she rushes to co- <laughs> to to like confess her love to Luke right when he's about to go to like he's like right outside of the prison or whatever it's called. And she like, you know, tells him like, you know, I really I like you or whatever. And he's like, yeah, me too. And they agree to be like married for real when he gets out. And then the credits play. And you can see, like, in the credits, it's like, oh, like, when he's done, they got married. Homegirl gets his name tattooed on her, on her uh, ring finger. Ring finger. And, um, yeah, they're at the beach, and they're together. The end. Wow. That was, I feel like it was a long recap still, but I did everything what a movie. I could. What a cinematic masterpiece. Mwah, chef's kiss. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> a master class in writing. Now. Let us get into our thoughts and observations. Um, <laughs> Where do I even start? I think I should start. Do I start or do you start? Because oh, okay. I already think I know where you stand. There's no. There's, I already knew when I watched this movie. I was like, oh, I know where she stands. I will say mm. what I think. 
<clears throat> quickly. Yeah. I could be summed up in a Go sentence. Ahead. Yeah. This film <laughs> could have been cute. I like this is right up my could alley. My been. right up my alley of trash is like right up my alley okay. of trash. Right. But they leaned into the Republican too tough. Like too <laughs> tough. <laughs> like there was moments where I almost forgot. Like I was like, oh, so cute. And then he would say something and I'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm back. <laughs> so that's what I would say is my stance. Now you can go okay. and I'll add my two cents in later. <sighs> where to start? First of all, I knew going into this, I was like, okay, listen, are we still making like military movies you know like like non-action military movies you know what i mean like uh if it's if you're talking something like top gun i get it people like pew pew guns whatever but like yeah i well i I would i was gonna say i thought this was gonna be more of like a dear john type of situation Mm -hmm. where it's you know it's about military people but not about the military if that makes sense you know oh, what I mean? okay okay like, you I know see. in dear john it's more about their relationship and then like her dad's plot line and then he just kind of happens to just be in the military in like a dangerous situation and whatever mm-hmm. um which you know at the end of the day most of these movies are still technically like military propaganda and stuff like that but um mm-hmm. like where they just show the military it's like oh they're so heroic blah, blah, blah. anyways but so i thought maybe this is gonna be one of those where it's kind of like you know i thought maybe i was like you know the military stuff's gonna be annoying but at least they'll have a cute romance or whatever yeah no there was none of that like even if you take away like i could i could split this up into two separate like thought trains here trains of mm-hmm. thought i guess the first one is the military political aspect of this movie that is ridiculous and then there's the romance aspect of this movie which is also ridiculous <laughs> so <laughs> i guess i'll just start with the first one um okay as you mentioned first of all not only is is this trying to be like a i don't know military i don't i don't even I, I can't even tell you what this movie was trying to say about the military because first i thought we were going in the direction because cassie is like very much like a liberal she says like you know Things that are the typical things female. that people who are liberal, liberal think, you know, where it's like free healthcare, like healthcare should be accessible. I shouldn't have to, you know, bust my ass just to afford medication that will literally save my life. Like, you know, regular moral things that most people would agree with. Right. Um, and he like says like he calls her a snowflake. He's like a liberal nut. Just like Lots it literally seems like they just went on like in Donald Trump's like replies and just like took from there. <laughs> Um, they're like this is great we can use this <laughs> so at the very beginning like in the very first scene when they first meet and he's saying all that stuff to her I was like oh, okay cool so like this is what's gonna be like he's gonna act like this first and then as they like get closer he's gonna like start seeing where she's coming from and maybe changing even his views because now he's meeting someone who's like an immigrant her she was like her either her or her family or something was undocumented like like she's mm-hmm. very clearly like the it's kind of weird to say but like, the poster child of like the opposite <laughs> of, of what he is so I thought the whole point is that he's going to like, you know, as they get closer, they're going to he's going to come to see that like, dang, like the things, my privilege and the things that I believe were mm-hmm. actually just sh- like show like come. They were actually just like funneled to me through the military and through all these other privileged people. No, nope, we don't get any of that. <laughs> In fact, it gets worse somehow. And he, they're literally like this is after the whole like midway through the movie. They're just chilling. She got him breakfast. Super cute. And then they start arguing again about like very fundamental political differences. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, we're still doing this. Okay. He like calls her again. Like, are oh, you liberal? And then she's like, hee hee. Anyways. <laughs> and then they just continue <laughs> the conversation. <laughs> like, huh? <laughs> okay. That's what I mean by leaning in too tough. Like, it's like. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, like, if we you're going to lean nice in moments? that tough, I thought we were leaning in that tough <laughs> to show that he changes, but he doesn't. So I'm like, oh, they were just trying to make him annoying just to make him annoying. And then you mean to tell me that like we're talking like maybe a third way through the movie and not, nothing like significant changes with their relationship or anything. He, they literally just sleep that one night and then he gets deployed. And you want to tell me the next time they're talking, she decides to write a song to dedicate it to the military. Wh- where did that come from? <laughs> where did your opinion of the military change all of a sudden? Were you not telling this guy off for saying he's going to hunt down Arabs literally three minutes ago? And now you're like, the song is dedicated to the brave soldiers. To be clear. Soldiers. Oh, yeah. His friends. <laughs> but he defended his friend, which is so 
Which is who worst. defended who? Nobody was defending nobody. Oh yeah, no, he I'm saying his friends. Sorry, he's no, a, he did, yeah, 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 yeah. Like he literally yeah. defended. W- anyways, that's a whole thing. It's also yeah, pronounced and then he Arabs. I can't. Like- that was stupid. First of all, I at that point I, I felt so embarrassed. I was watching the movie <laughs> with my parents, bro. Oh no, you were not. And if you didn't know, if you're I don't know new here, I am an Arab. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so that was awkward. <laughs> we literally all looked at each other. We were like, um. <laughs> Like, we literally funny, looked at each other and we were like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I That's what he going said on. that. I was like, I literally sat up. I was like, "Oh." <laughs> yeah and that's what i at first like i was bothered but i was like i get it you know maybe they're trying again i was like they're trying to show i was like this is actually really accurate and that's what my dad said too he was like no you know what this is like it's showing the accuracy of how like the marines are racist and 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 whatever Mm -hmm. how a lot of the military people tend to be have those views and whatever and i was like you know what yeah you're right and then he's gonna realize later on the movie nope never did never (laughs) did that was never addressed again in fact they kept arguing about things like that again and Mm -hmm. never came to any sort of agreement they just kind of ignored it and just stopped uh, acknowledging the fact that he's still racist and he still you know has these views and never once like has the realization like day i thought i was still i still had hope i thought when she almost went into her little coma thing he was gonna be like dang you know what yeah <laughs> like it sucks that she no literally no <laughs> never he just we just brush over that fact it was i was like this is ridiculous i was like why mm-hmm. why did we do this you're so not wrong is, yeah you uh, 100%. Yeah, uh, yeah so i was like oh so no this is literally and if anything she's the one who got closer to his point of view by you know de- like dedicating all her music or whatever oh the brave men and women fighting for our country and then she puts the american flag next to her black lives matters flag and next to her pride flag i was like oh my That's gosh insulting. yes she did do that. that is insulting you wait to talk <laughs> halfway through the movie she adds an american <laughs> flag next to those flags oh my this movie goodness. is so unserious i was like there's <laughs> no way i was like there's no way i was like oh so this is exactly the opposite of where i thought this was going she is in fact <laughs> understanding him and not the other way around so, I'm so sorry no. to the listeners i'm just laughing the whole time. it's okay but i was like this is ridiculous ah, dude. this is ridiculous no like okay. to give an example of what monica is talking about because i remember the scene yeah. <clears throat> of like unnecessary like when it's just like Pourquoi? like why did we do this there's a scene where like her doorknob is not on her door like she oh just keeps adding it God, don't even talk to me about and then <laughs> and then he like actually fixes it for her right and she goes oh you fixed it for me and she and he's like yeah and she's just like mm-hmm. and then he she walks to the kitchen and he's like you know you can like let a man help you and that doesn't mean you're like not a feminist it's like it's just things it's like, like that why wouldn't you say like they keep arguing about like why wouldn't you just say like oh because i understand that's part of her character she doesn't let people help her like they did establish that like her mom was trying to help her yep. literally live and she was like mom stop but they could have literally take the line and go you know you can let people help you and that doesn't make you weak you see how that's neutral like nobody's the same upset. sentiment except you're just trying to hammer in the fact that he's a terrible person <laughs> and again i understand doing that if it means that he's gonna like redeem himself there i'm not saying that like you know it's okay to add all these things just to re- but at least have him redeem himself mm-hmm. but no if anything it's the opposite he literally never acknowledges any of his like weird ass behavior any of his weird yeah. viewpoints that literally affect her mm-hmm. ridiculous anyways that's the whole like political military thing about this movie that i'm like that i was shocked because i saw people like I've, I've I've heard about this movie previously because I follow like Nick Gallatstein, who's the guy who plays Luke, because for other reasons he plays he's gonna be in the um oh, the yeah, adaptation yeah. for Red White and Royal Blue, which I will discuss in a minute as well. Um, uh, I've just I follow him on social media anyway, so he was promoting the movie, and I was like, okay, this is like it's a younger like it's younger slash like newish like stars, and like people are saying it's like so romantic, and I was like, okay, again, maybe I think this is gonna be like a Dear John situation where he just happens to be in the military, but it's about their love story. New, 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 <laughs> not that. So now let's talk about said romance. Um, yep. where who I did you see them falling in love? Because I didn't if anything i was like there's literally what are you guys what is your connection what are you what do you like about each other (laughs) because (laughs) like this was billed to me as like enemies to lovers whatever literally enemies to lovers fake dating one bed trope 
this is a recipe for me for liking you, yes, a romance. Correct. And you mean to tell me that it was horrendous? Like that you have to do some terrible job to for me to not like any of that. And they literally ruined it on all fronts. First of all, enemies to lovers. It's not enemies to lovers. He's just a racist. Okay. <laughs> He's just racist. That is not enemies. He's literally just a Republican. That that's not enemies. He's just a horrible person. Okay. Second of all, the fake dating, like, okay, they literally, okay, they get fake married, whatever. And then if you want to add in the one bed trope, I was like, okay, we're doing the one bed trope, cliche, Mm -hmm. whatever. Let's do it. They don't even get, like, they don't even do the one bed trope. The whole point of the one bed trope is that, like, it's two people who don't want to be sharing a bed together, share a bed, and then it creates all this tension. And then, you know, the typical thing is that they wake up and they happen to be in each other's arms, whatever you want to call it. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that not with the formula of the one bed trope? They don't even do that. They literally get in the room and they're like, Oh shit, there's only one bed. And then they talk for a minute and then they have sex. Like that's not the (laughs) one bed trope. (laughs) That's literally, they just subverted it. Like what was the point of that? It just made it look so cheesy at that point. (laughs) no 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 it's it was not it's not like that <laughs> they were like, oh, I thought there was only one bed oh this is so ridiculous I don't, I don't, I don't. i'm scared you're scared that's not the one bed trope mm-hmm. the bed is just in the background anyways and then yeah i thought like eventually they were gonna start you know loving each other or something but every time they were like their characters were or their romance was about to progress he would say some next liberal le- republic not liberal republican weird things mm-hmm. and they would argue and then the next minute she'd be like, anyways, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Like, I didn't see a romance forming like at all. It was just her trying to be nice and him being like, meh, 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 meh. and then she'd be like, yeah, it's fine. And then doing her little music thing. Like I, at that point, it was like third, uh, three quarters of the way through the movie. I'm like, can this movie end with her career taking off so much that she's like, I don't have time for you anymore. And then they're like, <laughs> you know what? I respect you. I respect you too. Bye. Like I thought that's how the movie was going to end. I was like, there's no other way I could be satisfied with the ending. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't. So there we go. <laughs> you were satisfied with him going to jail for six months, which is <laughs> not because even a pregnancy. Because they like he's just going on a little <laughs> vacation. They're like, I'm just going to be gone for six months. Or you are in, you are a war criminal. <laughs> at this point. You are, you are being housed with the war criminals. Like, this is not cute. Yeah. This is not a little six months away. No, you're going like, to jail. Why did he not come with a teardrop? <laughs> like, it was, they couldn't even make that satisfying. Like, you know what I mean? I just, I, oh I was goodness. so, I finished this movie and I, you know what made it worse and that's where i'm getting into my third and final point is what made it worse mm. is going back onto social media after watching this movie and seeing people be like oh my god this movie was so cute this is such a good romance enemies to lovers i'm not even done nick <laughs> mr nick gallatstein who's now on my watch list because i'm like there's no way there's no way you love this movie that much because he is posting about this movie who's this day and night as if he's getting paid to do it nick nicholas gallatstein the guy who plays luke oh the guy who plays it okay okay i'm like you're posting a little too much of, for, of this movie f- f- with the fact like considering the fact that your character is shit like your character is in fact the villain of the story <laughs> and you're like guys go watch the movie it's so good and it's like i get making one or two posts because you know you're probably contractually object no i think this guy genuinely just like thinks this is the best movie ever when i'm like <laughs> now i have my eye on you <laughs> now i have my eye on you and i'm not i'm i'm side eyeing you right now okay oh, because again i'm i'm following him because he plays uh prince what's his face henry in the adaptation coming up for red wine Royal blue mm-hmm. which i feel like eventually we're gonna have to do an episode on because girl is not looking good girl <laughs> i could have told you that for free hello um, um so now it's like strike two for him because he was in that <laughs> dumbass cinderella movie and now he's in this so if red wine Royal blue doesn't pan out like i'm sorry but that's strike three, three strikes you're, you're done you're done <laughs> like, i'm sorry but either you need to fire an agent or maybe he just has terrible taste because uh, there's no way you're reading these scripts and being like yep that's the yum, one yum, that's yum, what I'm my tongue. Um, um but wait sorry i have one last thing yeah go say. ahead what the nail in the coffin is the thirst edits i've seen oh being okay. made what about luke people made an edit of him telling cassie of luke telling cassie to sit, sit down, down when she's up. trying to defend not defend but when she's trying to call out the guy for saying we're gonna hunt down the arabs whatever and she's trying to call him out and there's a part where he's like sit down obviously he's saying sit down because he's like 
you're gonna ruin our ruse and also the fact that he probably is like why are you fighting him and he's like sit down and then she sits down like it's literally like you're watching and you're like oh my god girl stand the fuck up please like stop <laughs> sit down Slide up. people <laughs> are thirsting over that being like oh my god if he told me to sit down i would sit down like it's it's so it's like that and you might be like oh that's just people on the corner of the internet no because guess what mr nick galstein is doing he's <laughs> reposting those <laughs> he's reposting them and he's reacting to them being like ha ah, that's so funny no it's not funny <laughs> it's not funny i'm <laughs> sorry it's not it's not funny it's not cute it's weird why are you thirsting over a racist telling his girl or whatever to not argue with the guy being very racist like it's uh, excuse me like i felt I, that is when i started feeling actually insulted mm-hmm. i was like this is not this is not it this is not it no, i'm so sorry it, but. i felt like that was bad but i thought like <clears throat> when they went out <clears throat> that he would like take her side that was what i expected because i thought he was saying yeah. like sit down yeah. because i do get it like they literally just got married they can't be like that's what I'm they saying. can't be be fighting like that and he, even when he said arabs what's his face <laughs> did <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like this is not okay, but it, it is what it is. What Luke made like a bad face. Like actually all the people at the table, at least that's what the camera was trying to show us, is that everyone yeah. made like a weird everyone face. Everyone was uncomfortable. And so, that's why I thought it was heading in the direction of them being like, okay, like yeah, oh, that was pretty bad or whatever. But no, he literally goes there and tries to like justify it. Yeah. He's like, Well, you know, in Iraq, what are they gonna what are you gonna do? Teach him about pro oh no, that's the other guy who says, What are you gonna do? Teach him about pronouns. pronouns. <laughs> um but he goes outside and he's like, Well that's that's what we're fighting for like the people in iraq don't have this and this like huh <laughs> like he literally agrees with what the guy was saying it's like we're killing That's other arabs to save the arabs what's wrong <laughs> That's what he literally said and then they had the nerve to show them in iraq and do a little montage where they're playing with the cute little kids like shut up <laughs> you were literally a minute ago being like we're gonna hunt down the-. this is like cookie cutter military propaganda if you didn't already like clock that <laughs> that's literally what military propaganda is is where they make it seem like they're going over there just to hang out and chill with the locals and and shoot some bad guys down no it's not like that it's really not like that that's not what they're doing and that's why the guy knows it because he literally said we're going to hunt down the arabs yeah. he's if anything he's the one who's telling the most truth in this movie <laughs> because that's literally what they're going to do so oh, <laughs> oh my god and then at, like literally the next time we see him is in that little like like skype room thing where she's on skype with him and he's like hey man, 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 man. like they're all chill or whatever and then mm-hmm. she's singing her little song and they're all like oh that's so cute like we never address this ever again and that's just how that's just what it is we never even see him again he's just kind of there yeah true he doesn't come back <laughs> um nope. i thought he would have died <laughs> in the landmine thing like i really i was waiting for it yeah. i was like dang i hope that dude fucking died like <laughs> i thought it was gonna be him and frankie like i was like kill both the blacks like that's what i thought but oh my um God. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go the way it was. That's not. I'm not saying they should die because they're black. Obviously, guys. But and just... Anne is black. Please, yeah. Please know. If, you're, if you don't know, don't. Please don't get the wrong idea here. <laughs> Anne is black. I am Arab. Let's set that on the just table to, now before anyone just gets to paint the a wrong picture idea. of us okay. um, talking. The like way this. you said that, you're like, yeah. That I, I hope they were kill all the. Blacks. Yeah, kill the blacks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's Anne actually, is black. Okay, please no. Well, yeah, when she put the American flag next to Black Lives Matter, I was like, actually, put it on top. Like, might as well. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well. And the pride flag next to that too. Like what? Which wasn't even completely in frame. Like I had to squint. I was like, oh, oh my god. Okay. It was funny. Um. I mean, no, it's not funny. Like, but it's just <laughs> ridiculously. It's just ridiculously bad. I was like, yeah. The only thing I de- like, I maybe liked about this movie was her one of her. What was her her little cover of Sweet Caroline? I was like, oh, those you know good, what? no, she, she twist can sing. I saw her in Descendants. I know you. I see you, Cassie. Okay, she can sing, but I'm not a big fan of her voice. Her voice is very like, uh, like it's very like. Well, I don't know how to say it. Like cursive. I guess. Sing in cursive. But <laughs> you should listen to Chillin' Like a Villain. She kills that one. Um, very okay, well, I don't know. I'm not really uh, if I had known her discography, but also like I just remember in Descendants the way she talked too. She was like whisper. Oh yeah, she would. Anyways, that, like, that's the, hi, yeah. Hi, so hi, I feel like that's how she sings too. But I like, anyways, that's why the movie opened up with her. The, the only part of this movie I liked was the first three minutes Sweet. when there was just singing and we didn't know what the plot was yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. They just started singing. There was no like. Um, it was just like a. It's also, a I was like, like I was like, remix. is this the song I think it is? And then yeah, because I really at first the way she sings it is very stylistic. Right. I so. went into it being like, okay, like all right, you know, a jam. I see it, and then it just went downhill from there, <laughs> and it never came back up ever. 
Okay. So now That's I'm gonna my rant. ask a Thank few you questions. Okay. Or like, have we noticed just like a trend? Mm. I've okay. noticed though that when it comes to um, books or movies or TV that this try book, to do way, it's based on a book huh this movie was based on a book by the way Just oh it was based on a book there. yeah i did read that on the wiki well yeah i guess that applies to i don't know the plot of the book though to be fair i don't know how loosely no, or yeah, closely it's based um but when it comes to book tv movies when they tr- they do it's not the first time they've done enemies to lovers of this type where like the mm. difference between the two people is very like fundamental i don't know how else to say it mm-hmm. like it's like no, it a is real fundamental. Issue. like we're talking like fundamental differences where it's like it's not like like oh he's yeah. just cynical and i'm a sunshine or whatever no like, we're talking uh, like he literally thinks your people should die yes <laughs> like, you know yeah, what i yeah. mean so um like that makes me think for example a six of crows me and emma Tyus, like i cannot help but mm. think that's vibe and i've noticed and i'm sure i don't read as many but i've noticed that when these men are this way as an intolerant uh prejudice whatever you want to call them they usually have one or two or many of these traits they Mm. tend to quote-unquote punish the character at the end right yeah but then and i think i think this thought process is to be like oh see like he's being held accountable for like not only whatever he did, but like for all his thoughts and views. I think that's what their thought process is, right? Yeah. However, the person always gets punished after the lib girl. And it always, it always, by the way, it's always that way. It's always liberal girl. It's always that. And it's always lib girl, it, Republican boy. It's always the man. Or whatever gets, iteration of that exactly. is in the fantasy world. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. So, but it's always the, the right leaning guy gets punished, right? Um, which mm. is like, you're supposed to be like, yeah. But then the liberal girl has already caught feelings by then. That's what I was so going to say. Like, it always happens after the liberal right? girl comes around and So we're him torturing and the lib girl twice over because Ooh. she had to Ooh. deal with pre republic whatever, Ooh. like him bad. And then she, in this movie, she didn't fix him. But I'd say, like, in most times, they do, like, kind of quote unquote yeah, fix well, him. Yeah, I well, like, I like your example of Nina and Matthias. Yeah. If you haven't read six of crows like big spoiler warning just close your ears oh yeah three sorry, seconds guys. but like <laughs> um basically their little arc is that he is like he thinks that her people should literally die and he's mm-hmm. like trying to kill her literally trying to kill her but then they're forced to on a mission together and then they fall in love and he they they realize that they're you know he's, he's like, like okay i actually too. don't want you to die mm-hmm. i love you blah 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 i'm leaving my clan who wants you to die and then they kill him right after yeah. she like they're in love yeah so yeah <laughs> so it's like Oh. End of spoiler. <laughs> and then the the liberal girl gets punished for basically being in love with him, catching feelings, and then also like yeah, but also had to also had to uh, suffer the emotional labor beforehand. And then she quote unquote doesn't even get to reap the benefits if you really think about it. Because Literally. if we look at this film, Literally. even if they had changed it to like him fixing himself or whatever or being nice, mm-hmm. he still went to jail for six months like sis she's still waiting outside so like yeah if she did actually like if they did actually come around and she's like you're a good person now he still has to go to jail for six months yeah she's on her own so like on her yeah, own for six right. months she just has the, the girl she's the just getting the girl always just has to suffer yes that's what i'm that's what i'm saying like it's is never they don't really kind of think subtext it over there yeah mm. which is like mm. i think the subtext is let me not get too deep kids but i think we're here to reach <clears throat> i think low-key the subtext is because these women are always very strong and like mm. um, outspoken. Yep. And I think the yeah. subtext is like women like that kind of need to suffer a little bit to find mm. the one. As yep. in it's like it's very yep. much like back in the day, like around the 80s when like a lot of women worked a lot. <clears throat> They would have these random movies like I forget what it's called, like a working mom or working girl or whatever, where mm-hmm. she like accidentally becomes a parent, like somebody le- leaves her baby on her doorstep or whatever. And she becomes like less. She's like a CEO boss girl. And mm-hmm. she becomes less of that because of said baby. Right. Like she's like, mm. it definitely. Yeah, it definitely and does feel and like it's giving that punishing the women for being like strong. Exactly. And it's giving that vibe. But I feel like instead of like with kids, they've changed it now to more like with romance, as in like if this mm-hmm. lady who's rigid and like, you know, outspoken and whatever needs to find someone, she needs to like 
stop and tone it down, which is not, which I would say would or not be. You a, could say too, it works too. Also with like not just women who are like super like stoic and strong, but also yeah. women who are just outwardly like you know like again like the sunshine, mm-hmm. just like happy and outgoing and yeah. like very happy with themselves they have to give them like the super asshole dude to literally like quote unquote humble yeah. her, basically and which yeah now that you I actually never thought about it before but yeah and I they don't like that is like subconsciously right and they never do it the other way around in fact they'll do the yeah. opposite they'll get grumpy guy who gets fixed up by sunshine girl like you know like mm-hmm. i'm just saying every time it's the woman doing emotional labor to get to yeah the end result which is kind of not that great sometimes. Like, you know the movie that that. makes me feel like that to like 10,000? Knocked Up. Have you seen that movie? Ugh. I have. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's like, I guess, another branch of that where it's like always the woman is like hot, successful, whatever. It's like, no, you can't do that. You have to, we have to bring you down to a couple levels. It wasn't enough that she like, you know, has to live with the pregnancy. That's already hard. She has to live with some schlub who doesn't barely has a job and mm-hmm. smokes of the weed all day. Are you kidding? That's a. F- <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. why. No, I actually I never thought about that before. But you're so right, because mm-hmm. that's literally. And you know what? What? Again, maybe we're reaching a little bit. Maybe I'm reaching for the stars we're right just, now. We're but trying. I think we're just trying it out. I think maybe that's why. Like recently when it comes to like romance mm-hmm. books and, and things like that. I find myself pulling away a little bit more with like, like straight romance things. Yeah. Because I find that like that it's like, I didn't know what it was, but like now that you're mentioning, I feel like my eyes are being opened where it's like a lot of like typical, like heterosexual (laughs) romance, Mm -hmm. like fiction now is, has some kind of iteration of that. Yeah. Where it's always like the woman who has to get the short end of the stick or has to bring herself down and, Whereas in in like in LGBTQ fiction, when you pivot to that, it's obviously more equal because you know you don't have the typical heteronormative yeah. dynamics or whatever. So like I'm now like it's just my eyes are being opened. I'm like, dang, maybe that's why I'm I'm starting to like those romances better because it's like it's more of like an equal footing and stuff, <laughs> an equal footing, and like they're actually falling in love and not you know this girl having to compromise. Mm-hmm who she is and compromise right. her beliefs because it's like obviously her dignity any relationship is compromised but it's always it seems to be very like one-sided in a lot of these um mm. films and movies versus like for example i'd say like uh heart i know we both watched that because i to be yeah. fair i don't watch enough lgbtq plus um media to really i mean yeah i don't think a, i watch enough either like not enough to like a lot but yeah. definitely like increasing mm-hmm I think amount. I think there's been an increase in content at least on my side like I've seen it more yeah, on, come yeah. up I've never actually like been available <laughs> yeah exactly like I can't say I've actively been seeking it out which you know we'll try yeah but um with that like I do think both characters did did give a push and pull more equally as in like mm-hmm. um Nick had to be more like almost like I don't want to say like assertive about his sexuality because I don't know if that's like the right word, but you know, I think more like in tune, in tune. And then Charlie had to be less like insecure a little bit and like stand in is like, this Mm -hmm. is like, this is the decision I'm making and like, I'm good with this. Mm -hmm. And like, not everything that you do is like a reflection of me. I feel like there's a big thing with him. Um, And those are both really healthy growth paths to have you know and i exactly that's what it is and that's the i feel like in the recent like lgbt fiction that Mm -hmm. i've read it's like both characters like have an equal amount of growth yeah like personal growth and then they like come together you know in like a romantic sense Mm -hmm. but i feel like in the in a lot of these ones that i'm reading where it's like a a girl and a guy it's always like someone's having way more growth than the other person they try to make it seem like the girl's having growth when in reality if you actually look at it it's actually her regressing yeah it is (laughs) or like Mm -hmm. i feel like like what is it called like uh lessening whatever we were saying like you know regressing i think is still right i think you're right about that. yeah regressing her character or having to like dim her Her light stuff either like sunshine or Mm -hmm. i feel like stoicness or determined the only like the latest hetero (laughs) i don't know (laughs) film that did that right um was set it up actually i just thought about it because i just watched it not too recently Mm -hmm. where actually the man has to change quite a lot the girl character actually only has to become braver in her like 
work yeah but when it can't come that's why i love that movie so much like you know what i mean because when it comes to relationships he like actually concedes that like the way she does it is better like he's like you're not Mm -hmm. like hard to get but like you're hard to earn oh so good so i feel like like, i think this is subconsciously Mm -hmm. why i like that movie yeah (laughs) no i think i think it because i remember being like oh both these characters change in like really meaningful ways and then i think that's that's what it is. And and if you wanted to say he kind of quote unquote got the shorter end of the stick, but he was like punished too. Yeah. Like he had, but it's interesting because actually if you look at it really like and set it up, the guy, like he starts out, he's like super determined. He's trying to get to this high level position. Mm-hmm. And then he ends the movie by like accepting like a lower, lower job mm-hmm. so he can get to his thing. Yeah. But her actually ends up succeeding at the end where all the like work that she was putting in and like all the you know she was literally putting herself out there trying to write trying to write her like ridiculous little stories that like yeah only she could see the va- value in and then at the end she gets exactly what she's been working for like it's literally the opposite of what it usually yeah like she was looking for a mentorship is. and she was like not doing it well and then she finally like asserted herself yeah and at the end Versus like he... she finally is like lucy Liu's character is like okay i'll read your thing like yeah i'll help you become a writer and then he is like i'm actually gonna step downwards and go a little bit yeah. backwards because this is like what i know is gonna make me happier which is like yeah, like you said, it's literally the opposite dynamic, which I think is subconsciously a reason why a lot of people like this. Movie. Yeah, no, because <laughs> it's, like, it's like, and it's like it needed to be done. Like he was working for a douchebag and he was like, when asked about like what he wants to do, he's like, well, uh, the one that makes more money, you know, which is not, which he then realized, you know, some people live like that and that's fine. But he realized that's not mm. the way to go for him. So I do think that might be the T, guys. Is that the tea? No, you know what? It, it seems like we're reaching and it seems like we've gone completely off path from this Purple Hearts movie. But trust me when I say that like these little subconscious things mm-hmm. like you don't even realize are there. And I don't even think most of the time the people writing it realize they're there. It's just no. like, it's just. Yeah, like what we're we're not trying to say that it's like an agenda. Like they're literally like, hey, hey let's get no, women no, no. to submit. But it's like. No, but it's just it's so ingrained into like our thought process of how like women need to behave in like heterosexual yeah. relationships and how they need to like lessen themselves or like put put aside their mm-hmm. own morals and beliefs to do it. Yeah, because again, the people are watching this movie and being like, oh, my God, it's such a cute romance or whatever. But it's like, how could you like? I don't and I think it's like how. No, no, go ahead. Finish. No, no, I don't even know what I was going to say. I was going to say how you could, like, look at the guy and, and, and think that he had any sort of character growth or any or sort of... he was of, deserving. You know? Him. Yeah, and how she actually had to put aside... Not put aside, but she ended up getting her own beliefs, like, like pushed yeah. push down or being influenced by the, you know, by yeah. his beliefs. There was no and, give and take. Yeah. No, I think... And, like, even, no. like, I do think, for example... Like, this is what we're saying. It's not an agenda, per se, because in real life... No, I think it's just um, Women do tend to do most of the emotional labor in a lot of relationships when it comes to heterosexual Mm -hmm. relationships um but they should be rewarded at least like if this is supposed to be a happy ending movie they should be rewarded well well. like the least you could have done is have him like learn from his mistakes and make him like realize that the i thought like because they were addressing it so much in the first Mm -hmm. half of the movie like that's i thought that's how where it was gonna go i was like okay they're making it extra obvious that he's like super racist because throughout the movie throughout the story he's gonna realize that like you know all his beliefs are wrong and like what he what he thinks is literally just propaganda that's being funneled to him by the military industrial complex by the white privilege and etc etc um but that never happens (laughs) at all no so I was like, okay, so you're just showing that just to show it for just to have some kind of stark contrast between the two to make it like an enemies to lovers thing. But then it's like, but that's what it. I mean for <laughs> me, at least. That's what I'm saying. It's right up my alley of trash. If you t- if they didn't lean in too tough, mm-hmm. like I'm telling you, if yeah. he was just like, like the line I gave, take out this weird MAGA Twitter that you looked up and you would be that's what i'm saying if they had like toned it down a little and then at least like you could have one scene where he was like you know they talk about it and he's like i see now how like you know blah 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 like they didn't have to make it too complicated like obviously in a perfect world they would like address Mm -hmm. how it's like you know how the military can like propel these sort of thoughts or whatever they didn't have to do that if he had literally just been like okay like i get like it, surface whatever. level like we didn't I would need been like to you know be what deep. fine it's a yeah. little trash movie it's a little trash romance movie but at least they address the fact that he is the wrong which one is here. you know what's weird <laughs> but they don't too the arab scene in a normal film wouldn't have happened to like the third act ish where he would have like already fixed yeah. himself like 
where he's like yeah because that would have been a good time for him to be like, like you don't know say what? stuff like that yeah Kevin, i don't which, know his name which would have been but like, cheesy but you like, shouldn't it, say that it, that's the kind of thing that they do yeah. like you you have the character i would have been fine yeah. with that yeah. i would rather have cheesy than right stupid. like <laughs> no like it was shocking like i would like, i was like no <laughs> that's what i'm saying i was confused i was confused. girl it was giving it's crazy okay now to wrap up the podcast i have one more question yeah we're getting a we are going uh, over time yeah but it'll be sure. fun Okay, this one this is important. Might take you a minute to think about. Okay, but okay. I think this would be fun. I feel like we should do this with other films too. Someone Ooh, okay, is I'm paying excited. you one million dollars to fix this movie, but you can okay. only remove one scene or plot point, like very specific, and add one mm-hmm. scene slash plot point. Plot point. Okay. Oh my goodness, English. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of like what I already Almost, said. Yeah. Like, I would just take out one because I think, from what I can mm-hmm. recall, there's four separate instances of him spewing the MAGA, you know, yeah. buzzword shit. And I think if I count them, so there's the first one at the bar, yes, and then there's the second one, which is at the um, diner when they're talking, like when they're making the arrangements, and he calls oh. her a liberal nut and whatever. Oh, and then the third one is at the dinner or whatever at the Arab <laughs> shit, <laughs> and then the fourth is in the apartment or technically five if you call it count the feminism thing too. Like when he's like, "You can help, let me help you without thinking you're not less of a yeah. feminist." There's I think that's that one, the same the one scene before though, that. Like she brought burritos. I it's, think it's like kind of a same. continuation. Yeah. No, I think it's a different. Is it? Okay, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. But then and then there's the scene where over breakfast when they're eating the breakfast tacos yes. when they start arguing and he calls her a snowflake. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's those five scenes. <laughs> so I would take one of those out. Yes. Preferably maybe the ones that happen a little later on because mm-hmm. you know if it happens at the beginning it's like i get it he's still stupid so i would take out one of those scenes yes like one of the later ones maybe the breakfast one or something Mm -hmm. and replace it with a scene where he sees his you know how that his viewpoint has been skewed yes by all these like privileges and stuff or where they were i don't know i can't think of exactly what the scene would be but where he basically is like dang i realize now maybe he hears his like uppers or his like other um military what do they call it Te- not teammates <laughs> what do you call it like Coworkers? military um uh, there's know. a word for it Co- Co- your buddies your okay. your your, your, what the heck? your how do we your not squadron. know that like a very <laughs> members of your word. squadron yeah yeah i could okay i'm envisioning maybe like a scene where uh he's at like his squadron and then he hears them again like making fun of like the local people you know what you can make it all cheesy i don't give a yeah, fuck sure. they're like if he's like um if they they're they're spending a day like playing with the locals they're like oh my god they're so cute they're playing with the little local kids and then they go home and then they like not go home but they go back to their bunks and then they hear them making fun of here's them making fun of the arabs again <laughs> and then he's like what like we just like hung out with them like they're so nice and then he's like dang these people are kind of racist <laughs> and then he goes back home and then he starts like contemplating these things again and then then they, he can actually like and then maybe she has her little diabetic coma and then he's like dang the healthcare system's messed up <laughs> shit like Not I'm, I'm have these really <laughs> weird beliefs and then he like can say literally one thing to her and be like i get it now like you know like i see what you mean now mm-hmm. and i want to be better that's all you need yeah and i would be totally fine with that yeah. it's cheesy it's trash but at least it's something it's, yeah it's an effort it would so that's what i would do interesting i agree with that but i went a different route okay did you go more like the romance like uh a little bit of both i think aspect? it'll fix a little okay bit. i actually okay. i know i'm gonna sound like a prude but i would have taken out the sex scene because oh, 100%. it didn't that make so unnecessary right, it, it didn't, didn't add anything it didn't add anything number one but also it did not make sense that after the arab comment she was like yeah let me <laughs> <laughs> i literally was sitting there and i was like she's gonna fuck him after that excuse me <laughs> like after he just made an excuse sis no 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 no, no. yeah and i forgot about did, that kind of but like i think my political thing is a little more <laughs> important to me at least yeah yeah but so, all uh, he did but was, no that would be my second choice no because like necessary. at least because it set a precedent that it was okay like what he was doing because yep you know yep. so i think like even from i think that both fixed the romance and political a little bit at the same time like that doesn't yeah, make you're sense right. <laughs> take that out okay um then because i think it would have been good like like because be, basically what you said because if they didn't have the cx then the, uh, she would have been like kind of cold when he left 
and then they would have warmed up more on FaceTime and whatever. And I think they could have talked more mm-hmm. like about stuff. Like if they showed them yeah. talking about a little bit of like both sides. Like I think it's fine if he's like, well, it's really hard out here. And she's like, yeah, well, like think about the Arabs. Like, you know, they're, not, they're yeah. people too. And then like even like, his military buddy. Them to have military on their asses all the right? time. Right. And even the military buddy who's sitting behind can hear about it on the computer because he was listening. So. Have him yeah. listen. She could have even made a little a little A Rab adjacent song. <laughs> to hypnotize her. Yeah, like the fact that she made a song for the military, but couldn't make a song for the literally the people suffering from war. Right? Like, no, don't even talk to me right now. Like right? this movie. Is like so that could have been that. Okay, but I'm I'm cheating, okay? So I'll take out the, yeah. the CX one. And the intercourse. The intercourse one. And I know it's tough because he does still talk MAGA like after. Yeah. <sighs> But I feel like maybe like a scene after he moves in, like mm-hmm. maybe some showing a little PTSD from him mm. to show like that he's like seeing things in a new light. Like maybe he yeah. this man really had to go tr- full trauma. Like he's literally in a wheelchair. Like maybe even like show that like how healthcare, like even oh he yeah. could have had a friend who's like also at at physical therapy. And then the friend's like, oh, I can't afford it anymore because they cut me off. Or just something like that. To sh- That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Just something to have him, like, realize that mm-hmm. he's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I feel like that would have been a good does. time. Because he was in the most vulnerable spot ever at that point. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of what you would need for somebody like that. To be, in, like, down bad. And... Yeah. which is bad Maybe even he's in the hospital and he overhears like the next room over and they're crying yeah he's like dang like someone must have died and they're like but we can't afford all these treatments yeah and he's like oh that's just like my girl that i'm like you know crushing on yeah she can't and then he goes treatments. like wow like i mm. didn't realize like how tough it was i was just not thinking she's mm-hmm. like she's like yeah and then maybe like they, if they really wanted to hammer it home like the doctor who's trying to tell them what the price <laughs> this is so stupid what? <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> Maybe if they really wanted to, like, hit two birds with one stone, Mm -hmm. they could be, like, I don't know, maybe the family who's crying because they can't afford it. Maybe they're also, like, immigrants or something. Yeah. And then, like, the people are, like, I'm sorry, like, you can't, like, it's going to cost this much. I'm, like, but we can't afford this. Like, we don't have health care, blah, 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 blah. And he's, like, well, maybe you can go back to your country and pay for it there. (laughs) Like. Just like two words of one stone. So he's like, "Oh my god!" And then he's like, Let "Like me- healthcare is bad and racism is bad. Oh, it's so tough." <laughs> and he doesn't think about it. Like I don't know. I'm try- like literally. These are all like stupid ideas, but they would still make it better. Than yeah, like is. at <laughs> least you tried. That would be the- like at least you made an attempt. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think that's super funny. Um, <laughs> they hilarious. just had to like just throw it in there, like for us to try to do with the little screenwriting brain cells that we have. None trying to fix this film, but yeah guys um i'd say my my takeaway from this is yes. always just be like cautious of any movie that you watch that deals with the u.s military not mm-hmm. only because you know the consensus in the usa this is coming from an arab by the way so i have a <laughs> i have a perspective on this from from parents who grew up in the middle east and, and whatever mm-hmm. um <clears throat> i will tell you that like the general consensus in like the usa and that's what they kind of like it's all it's all like a an industry they hammered this idea home because then they can have more money to be able to go and do their political shenanigans um because that's what the military is they go and do political it's for political strongholds that's their it's they're not going to help you they're not going to fight they're not helping the arabs okay they're not it's funny because they simultaneously it's like the guy is sitting at the table saying we're gonna hunt down the arabs and then he goes to the back with her and tries to explain to her and then tries to say, oh, no, we're going there to help them. So which one is it? Are you hunting <laughs> them down or are you helping them? Which is exactly the problem is that, you know, they they tell the military people we're going to hunt them down. We're going to hunt down the bad guys. They tell the public that, oh, no, we're going to help them because they have war and stuff like that. When in reality, they're not trying. They don't even care about the people there. They're just there for, you know, political reasons and oil and, you know, to, to because they want to like it's literally to intimidate them so that they do whatever they ask anyways my point is is that that's the general consensus in like the usa because that's what they want their people to believe and that's why their military gets like billions and billions of dollars so if you ever see a movie that deals with the u.s military trust me when i say that the u.s military has to approve that shit they have to approve like Ooh. their portrayal in movies especially if they want to use like props and stuff like that that's kind of like a lot of people use um, captain marvel an example of this but 
I find that Captain Marvel actually does like a decent job of avoiding the military like propaganda a little bit. It's like um, very because we're dealing with like aliens and shit, yeah. so it's not it's not very even, like, far it's not removed. Real. Yeah, but it's just an example of like because to be able to use those fighter jets, they had to get like approval and like basically it's a rule that like you're not allowed to like say bad things about the military if you're about to like if you're gonna mention them Mm -hmm. or if you're gonna use their intellectual property or whatever it is like you're not allowed to insult them or like paint them in a bad light so Mm. anytime you're watching any military movie this includes top gun this includes all of those things that everyone is like oh it's so good just keep that in mind that this is like trying to paint a picture of the military that is not reality and like the reality is more of like it's just causing it's it causes all sorts of international problems and also causes problems for the military people themselves who like literally get like ptsd they get injured and then they come home and have no support Mm -hmm. and they end up homeless and they end up having mental health issues and like the suicide rates are super high whatever so that's my like two cents on this where and in like i feel like it's this movie sucks because it's like gearing towards like impressionable young mostly like girls about like oh romance whatever but like silently feeding them the military propaganda so <laughs> just be careful is all i want to say and keep like a critical lens when you watch anything military related yeah that's just my my two cents from an arab and my two cents is if he pronounces his arab you should run okay <laughs> okay yeah yeah I'm, i've literally haven't heard that since like a period piece okay so like i don't even know where i've heard that before. like a historical film <laughs> like a historical film from like world war something okay that's the last time i've heard <laughs> something like that okay so yeah run thanks yeah that's and it. if you hear someone say some shit like that stand up to them don't be that person don't sit like, down hey, just huh? don't listen to him don't, don't sit, sit down. down you gotta stand up and you gotta punch him in the face i actually swear nobody would say that in front of me i literally i promise oh, you absolutely not they would be like this is not the one to talk to no no so. no 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 yep anyways <laughs> all we, right are we rating this movie are we giving it a rating um i don't think that's necessary <laughs> I don't think um, it'll be intellectual. Yeah. Um, also, again, I forgot to mention this. What? I thought that Come Back Home song was not even that good. I'm going to be real mm. with you. I thought her song was kind of trash. I thought her, uh, which one was actually good? Mm. Is it, was it the blue sky? Whatever. Some, one was okay. Anyways. <sighs> Anyways, um, I would give this a, a D minus. Oh, I thought you were just going to get an F, but that's. That's nice. I mean, it's like at the end of the day, I've like it's it's a bad fundamentally, but you know, mm-hmm. it's a movie. It's a movie. Listen, <laughs> um, I would say that I want them to do like if they hadn't done this, I'd be like, oh, these two could do something. But now they've done this, and I mean, sorry, the two <laughs> actors. Maybe it, maybe it's a D minus because I know it could be easily tweaked a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because like, it. listen, I will say this is not okay. I hope the bad people have clicked off already by this point mm. um he did come up way came <laughs> oh my goodness he came off way more like a male lead actually attractive in this film compared to cinderella like in cinderella i was not even convinced like yeah. i was like this man is he was he didn't look good in cinderella but this time he had the audacity to actually look okay like he looks like, okay and his man. voice was low like i was like what who did this? I just don't like what he does with his lips. I don't know if I yeah, I, that's just, I get what you're it, saying. But he does like a he does like a pouty face. Like a person. Thing. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's good. just his face. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. I, uh, I'm so sorry. This man. Respectfully, we're sorry. But um, but his voice I think just that little pouty thing that he does it just it throws me off. His voice was giving deep, and I was like, don't tell me yeah. why this is the first thing I thought. I'm totally rambling now. In the hating game, I was like, why did they tell him to do the same thing this boy's doing? Because I heard your high pitched mm. voice in Cinderella. So <laughs> yeah, the hating game where he's like, hey, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like oh my God. God. no i will say i i have a final thought and this is directed at you mr nick nicholas oh Gallitz, how do you say Gallatstein? sir what ma'am i didn't know Gallat Gallatzine. Gallatzine. i know sophia um, carson is that the sophia carson oh i don't care uh, i don't have any i don't know i don't watch her things but i'm telling you mr nicholas Gallatzine. you're reminding again you're on strike two okay <laughs> you are on strike two Please don't go three for three because that would be horrendous. Because think about it. Cinderella came out in 2021. Purple Hearts in 2022. I think Red, Red, and Royal Blue is slated to come out in 2023. Mm-hmm. If you go three for three on these horrendous movies, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I can't defend you. I can't. <laughs> Wait, okay? you were defending him before? 
I mean, when Cinderella, when he first got announced to be in the cast of Red, Brown, and More Blue, and the only thing I knew him from was Cinderella, I was like, you know what? I will, I will give you a chance. Oh I yeah, that's give true. you a you chance. Were nicer to him than I would. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. but now you're again, you're on my watch list. So, yeah. and obviously, you can't control if the Red, Brown, and More Blue movie turns out bad, but it's not looking good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's not looking good. It's not looking. And also, is he Brit? Like, have we established? He's British. Okay. <laughs> So his American voice is just deep. He needs to keep that. Uh, at respectfully, <laughs> he needs to keep that. It's interesting, though, how he's literally going to play, like, a, a British prince in his next project. Like, it's just... A gay just one, the too. Opposite. A gay British prince. Like, the, like, the uh, type that his like, buddy Luke would not like. Okay? No. So that is very interesting to me, which is why I'm, like, questioning his ability to right. Did you even the give him, like, the basic, given? like, how to fix a man thing, which is give him a gay best friend? I feel like that's the thing that every rom-com tries to do, mm. where they're like, oh, he's an a-hole, but his friend's gay, so it means he's an ally. Like, they do that, too. Um, yeah. They didn't even try that, either. So, um, no, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, uh, this is just for you, Mr. Nicholas. Um, just just watch out, okay? Let's Let's, you know, let's find some better scripts. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Um, we hope we you enjoyed hope you it. it. Yes, we enjoyed it's it. It's a little serious, Talk but, you know, it, yeah. sometimes it's necessary. <laughs> sometimes. Um, but you know what we're serious about, too? Reviews, which you should give mm. us some good ones. Five stars. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, mm-hmm. follow us. You know the drill. Do that. Do that. Follow and, and subscribe our on our youtube channel we do a lot of oh stuff yes now. and just posted a video mm-hmm. um about the Avat- avatar the last airbender you should go check that out yeah and we have and some people are already hating so you better oh, like are that. they i thought video. i saw one comment saying that they liked it that they said that's their new favorite channel oh my gosh <laughs> not, not me only why is youtube filtering only the wait i only saw whatever. one comment yeah. on the video are people actually hating oh my god i'm gonna go fight them no no on like i saw like a bunch of dislikes <gasps> a couple like it's like 50 50 oh and then one person on Twitter was like, "Ugh, is this the year where we dislike everything now?" Oh like, my god, right, they should watch the video next. and see. Yeah, I I knew they didn't watch the no, video. No, that's how you know they just read the, the headlines and yeah. Yep. Anyways, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, go check that video out. It's already got like over mm-hmm. six hundred views though. So look at you go. Yes, um, and we obviously you. have some more fun content coming. So make sure you keep up with that and subscribe to our YouTube yes. channel. And yeah. We'll uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye.